Good evening, and welcome to the meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission of Prescott Valley. Isabella, would you take the roll, please? Yes, I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. All right. Commissioner Sinclair? Here. Vice Chairperson Smith? Here. Commissioner Lira? Present. And Commission, uh, Chairperson Quisenberry is absent. We do have a quorum. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented, please? I make a motion to approve the agenda as written. I have a second. Second, please. All in favor? Aye. 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 May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the August 12th work study and the August 19th regular meeting? I'd like to make a motion for that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Isabella? You have some announcements, some presentation for, and a presentation for us? Yes, thank you. So we were gonna have a guest artist tonight, Mr. Ed Riley of Braun Smith. Um, he was not able to attend, but he did pass on the information that he wanted to share with you all. Um, so Mr. Riley wanted to give an update on the Jenkins obelisk. Um, it is underway, and we're so excited about that project. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's a monumental bronze sculpture that is five years in the making and we're um, able to make it happen because of a very generous bequest from a local family, um, the Jenkins family. And Mr. Riley has named the monument after them. So um, we did wanna share with you, I'm gonna grab a visual. So Mr. Riley wanted to share with you all um, a visual that he put together of the corner of the Civic Center. Um, this is the uh, Civic Center sign and behind it, the monument that you can see here. So it's lit from the inside. Um, it's going to serve as kind of a beacon um, for the community and that's what it was designed for. So um, he is on track for a May um, 2021 installation for this piece. Thank you, Isabella. We're so excited to have this finally in progress. And we'll keep you updated on its, on its growth yes. <laughs> as it's being produced. Uh, any new programs, classes you'd like to tell us about? Yes, so we have some updates um, from Parks and Recreation. So our aquatics, um, Postseason schedule is uh, wrapping up, basically. The pool is closed to the public, but we do still have the Bradshaw Mountain High School swim practice um, from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. and swim meets. We had one on the 24th, and we have another one on the 1st of October, um, tomorrow. And, uh, and then we'll be wrapped up for the season because it's getting a little too cold. And then we have um, our athletics update. So we have softball leagues going on currently, um, Monday and Friday nights, where you have 38 teams playing and 228 participants, so a really great turnout this year. Um, on average, we're seeing about 60 spectators, and um, we have made some changes um, due to COVID that those spectators are asked to stand outside of the fields, and it's going really well and everyone's been really safe um, and respected those things. So thank you to our community for that. And um, we've also been bringing in some external tournaments. Um, we've had three fast pitch uh, tournaments, um, both in-state organizations and California organizations, and one men's slow pitch tournament. Um, those tournaments have brought uh, tourism into our community, they've brought dollars into our community, and um, we just want to, I personally want to thank and highlight our new athletics um, coordinator with Parks and Recreation, uh, Shelly Whitaker, and she's been awesome in coordinating all of those things, keeping everyone safe through COVID, but also getting people outside and active and enjoying our great weather here. So those are our updates. Thank you. 
moving on to our division and department updates, uh, is there anything there that you need to present? Um, our chairperson, Lindsay Quisenberry, had uh, wanted to present something about fine arts education and what it means. And since she, she's not here, but we would like to do this presentation that she put together explaining why art education is important. Got the slides? Oh, I can't see that. One of the facts about fine arts education is that students who study art are four times more likely to be recognized for academic achievement. It's because they're being able to express themselves and can they do better work in their regular studies. Moving along, art offers a way for autistic students who have trouble communicating to express themselves without words. That's critical in today's world. Using art is one of the best ways to teach English as a second language students. It's uni art is universal and it bridges the widest cultural gaps. In 2008, funds were cut in over 80% of the US schools and some of the first programs to go were within the fine arts, we all know that. <laughs> and fortunately here, here in Prescott Valley, our arts programs are back on track and we're so grateful for that. There's a new report that offers insights into the arts and education uh, access and participation in an Arizona school. It's, it's called the Arts Education Data Project. I'm not sure where you find this. You might wanna look it up and check it out. Yeah, if you Google Arts Education Data Project, they have a website. They have a website, mm -hmm. but, okay, Arts Education Data Project. Project. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay, for putting this together. Go ahead. Um, on our old business committee update planning, Isabella? Yes, yeah, so we'd like to share with the community um, the Prescott Valley Fine Art Showcase 2020. The theme is building community this year. So this show is currently up in our Prescott Valley Public Library and it runs until November 17th, so you've got some time to come out and see it. Um, we've juried together the best local talent that we can find in 2D art, and it's really a fantastic little show here at the library. Um, we have, uh, here you can see the best in show winner. Um, it's painting, uh, drawing, pastel, watercolor, a nice combination of 2D art. And um, I'm gonna flip through some slides so you all can see some of the pieces that we have. It's just really some fantastic work. You can see here that we have um, actually some wood burning, which is definitely three-dimensional, but it's considered 2D because it's um, hanging on the wall and it's a flat surface. Um, so there's a lot of variety to this show. We have um, some local artists who have shown in our space before, artists from the Prescott Valley Art Guild, and just a really wonderful highlight of all the talent that we have here. And we gave out um, prizes in first and second place in painting, drawing, and 2D mixed media, and a best in show. So come on down to the library between now and November 17th and check out the show and check out who won. Um, we're really excited to have this showcase going on. And then we want to let everyone know that Create a Tree is coming. It's already, <laughs> what happened? I don't know, we're already here. So um, our Create a Tree, if you're not familiar, it's um, an opportunity for individuals, artists, organizations, churches, businesses to come out and create um, some sort of a tree, a holiday tree, uh, made out of whatever you want to make it out of, um, as long as it's not flammable, <laughs> that's all that we ask. Um, so we've had people make it out of ladders in the past, diaper boxes, um, milk crates, all sorts of things. Um, pet carriers. Yeah, pet carriers. Um, so 
if this sounds like something that would be fun for your family to do right now, um, we've had grandparents um, make trees with their grandkids. Um, churches, a lot of the times, will put together wonderful trees or businesses. If you want to um, highlight your business and get all your employees together and do something fun, um, our applications will be available on October 5th. That's this coming up Monday. And you can find them on our website, pvaz.net backslash parks. You can also um, call me or email me directly, and I'll send you an application, 928-759-3127, um, or I-C-H-E-W-N-I-N-G at pvaz.net. That's my email. Um, if you want me to just send you an application, or come down and see us. Um, the Civic Center building here on Scoob Boulevard on the third floor, we're in the Parks and Recreation Office, and you can pick up an application in person. Um, if you want to run your ideas by us or any of our admins at the front desk and uh, see ideas, get ideas from them, we'd be happy to bounce ideas off of you guys too. So. Um, come out and participate and create a tree. And if you're not feeling creative and you don't want to participate, then come see the show. It's going to go up um, the last week of November. And uh, the first week of December, we have our um, Festival of Lights here on December 4th, which is a great opportunity to see the light parade, hear the corollers, and then come out and see our create a tree as well. So we'll remind you guys as that comes up. And how long will it be open? How long? So Create a Tree is actually going to be on display from the last week of November all the way until January 8th this year. So it's a nice Any long time? opportunity. Yeah. Four weeks then? Five weeks? No, longer. Um, seven weeks. Seven yes. weeks. Yeah, yes. seven weeks. Um, and we do a best of show as well. So we do a yes. public vote. Um, and that's always fun to vie for the public vote. But yes. Super fun program. Um, we had about just under 40 trees in the library last year, um, and it really fills the space nicely. So we're excited. A lot of them are so fun to see. Yeah. Several years ago, talking about different trees, one of our businesses, a hair salon, decorated their whole tree with rollers and all <laughs> the things that they use, and it was just beautiful. All of a sudden, you look and say, oh, it's a roller. Yeah. Oh, it's a cotton swab. <laughs> and people really go good. people do very traditional trees too. Oh and that's yes. okay too. That's beautiful. We want it all. So yes. bring it all. Last year we had one with a whole story. I think that one won too, was the one that had the story with it. Yeah, it was, yes. it was like a local what uh, a local player. author and artist. Yes. She um created the entire tree by hand, made all the ornaments it by was, hand. It was incredible. That was it was awesome. magnificent. It was just magnificent. So it's worth the trip to see. Bring yes, the family. Yes, definitely. Okay. All right, so the next thing um, that we want to share with everyone, this is piggybacking off of the Jenkins Obelisk project that we were talking about before. Um, this is the other corner of the Civic Center. So we have a semicircle here at the Civic Center, and we're putting bronze art on both corners because of the um, bequest um, from the Jenkins family. We're able to do two monumental sculptures with that bequest. So um, this is our public call to artists for the other corner. Now, it is closing this Friday, um, October 2nd, but if you are someone who is an artist or an artist group or you know someone, um, it is still open. There is still some time to apply um, to be a part of this. It's an open call. The project um, is $110,000 in total, and um, we're asking for a bronze artwork of monumental scale that represents the local flora and fauna of northern Arizona. So. Again, if this is something that you want to know more about or you're interested in um, or you just want to talk to me about, give me a call or an email. Again, 928-759-3127 or give me an email at I-C-H-E-W-N-I-N-G at pvaz.net. Thank you, Isabella. Moving on to our new business, uh, may we learn about National Arts and Humanities Month, please? Yeah, so um, we're really excited about National Arts and Humanities Month this year. Um, October is National Arts and Humanities Month. And um, 
What they uh, like to focus on is um, equitable access to the arts at local, state, and national levels, um, encouraging individuals, organizations, and diverse communities to participate in the arts, allowing governments and businesses to show their support of the arts, and raising public awareness about the role the arts and humanities play in our communities and our lives. So throughout the month of October, um, please follow us on social media and check in on our town website. You can find um, our arts and culture under our Parks and Rec um, social media. So if you search at PV Parks and Rec, um, you'll find our Instagram and our Facebook. Um, we're also going to be putting some stuff out on YouTube, um, Channel 56. You'll be seeing some art-focused things, and um, we're really going to be just highlighting all of the projects that the commission has going on right now, as well as the local talent that we have here um, in Prescott Valley. We're really excited. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Do you have an introduction for us? Yes, I do. Um, Casey, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> yes, thank you. Commissioners, I'm very happy to be here. I am Casey Van Heron. I am the new Community Services Director uh, for Library, Arts, and Parks and Recreation for the Town of Prescott Valley. We're so happy to have you. <laughs> thank you. I'm really happy to be a part of this. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to yes. meet you. And I'm Robert Kieran. Uh, everybody around here just calls me Bobby. I'll be the new deputy director within the department, and I'm very excited to be working with everyone here. So nice to meet you, Bobby. Nice Welcome aboard. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, guys. So I just wanted to explain um, with the uh, uh, res with Brian Whitty's resignation, the town had been. Uh, kind of throwing around for a while the opportunity to eventually merge um, both library and parks and recreation. So here the opportunity finally came. Um, and it's been quite a flash flood, as I call it. We've all just been kind of hanging on and going down this fast moving path. Um, but with the help of the town, the support of the uh, town manager, I think we've really set ourselves up for success with a great um, uh, organization chart. Uh, and we've bumped a couple people up in the organization. Uh, Nick uh, Grobaluski is now a parks manager. Um, we've kind of split those two areas apart. So instead of parks and recreation, we have parks. Nick is the manager of parks. We have uh, Jason Elmer is now the manager of the recreation. And to kind of make a good balance, Jocelyn Joseph, who it has already, she was a library manager, but she is just over the library now, period. So we have a really good balance. Uh, Isabella, her department, arts and culture, um, will be directly uh, under me or it's going to be part of the library. So yes. usually in a lot of the departments in towns and cities, uh, libraries and our, all arts and culture go hand in hand. So we're glad that we can kind of, you know, marry those two finally. So. Imagine the logic of that. I know, right? <laughs> right? We have the arts and, and literacy, which is, it's hard to, you know, <laughs> budget those with not a lot of money. So, um, it's it we're still kind of trying to keep our head above water um and moving forward we want to try to slow down a little bit now that most of these changes have happened and uh i know that we look forward to working with this commission so we're so, certainly happy to have you with us thank you thank you all right any other questions no, no? thank you okay. nice to meet you again thank nice you. to meet you thank just, you it's just very exciting awesome <laughs> Is, is there any other business that we need to bring before the commission? Our next meeting will be a work study meeting on Wednesday, October 14th at 5.30 p.m. in the conference room in the Civic Center, our room 428. And our regular meeting will be the following Wednesday, October 21st at 5.30 p.m. right here in the auditorium and I invite any members of the town public that would like to be present at our meeting to come on down and join us. There being no further
business to discuss, I declare that this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>